How do you go from looking like this to looking like this? Well, there's a few different processes that you can go through. Number one, you can start in a fat loss phase, stripping down as much body fat as possible while still maintaining muscle mass. Number two, you can start in a building phase, slowly increasing the amount of calories you eat, increasing your strength, but not gaining a necessary amount of body fat. It will depend on the client. I'm going to tell you in this video which one will be right for you. Third process you can take towards your dream body is undergoing something called a body recomposition, just like my client did. There are certain individuals that will benefit more from body recomposition than others. Number one being beginners. People who have no experience lifting weights will see a lot more muscle mass gains than somebody who has been lifting for six or seven years. Number two, deep trained in individuals or people who have spent some time away from the gyms. Maybe that's because of injury, because of vacation, just downtime. People who have not been resistance training continuously. Number three are individuals who are obese or very overweight. And this is because they have a lot more weight to lose. And that fat can be fueled in the gym in order to build more muscle. If you fall into one of these three categories, you can best believe you are going to undergo body recomposition. The first most important thing you need to do is set up your diet so that it is conducive to muscle building and fat loss. So with that said, do not set your calories too low because it's going to be very difficult for you to maintain that for weeks on end. In addition to that, you are going to be recovering from your grueling resistance training sessions and you need enough calories to support that. Now that you have set up your calories, ensure that you are eating at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight to ensure that your body has amino acids it needs to build your muscle. Studies have actually shown the greater the caloric deficit, the more likely it is for your muscles to undergo protein breakdown. That's the last thing we need. You want to set up your deficit calories so that you're about 5 to 20% below your maintenance calories. If you don't know what your maintenance calories are, you can roughly estimate what they are just by inputting foods that you typically eat in a day and then just eat 5 to 20% less of that. Somebody who is already naturally very skinny, very lean, you wouldn't need a larger deficit versus somebody who has more weight to lose. Next thing after your diet is you need a structured resistance training program something that is progressive in nature and that you can challenge your body and give it a new stimulus every single week. Now, I don't mean exactly adding more weight every single week. That could mean increasing the amount of reps you do on a certain exercise, decreasing the tempo, but something that will make the movement more challenging. Number three, we need to optimize your nutrient timing. You really want to make sure you have a nice, decent amount of protein whether that be 25 to 40 grams, depending on you and your current macros, you wanna have most of your protein after your workout to maximize the benefits of muscle protein synthesis. Studies have shown that if you spread out your protein evenly throughout the day, you have more benefit to maximizing your muscle growth versus you just eating to bolus meals of protein throughout the day. In addition to that, you wanna make sure you have a lot of your carbs pre and post workout, minimizing the amount of fats because fats will decrease the gastric emptying time and you want fast release of carbohydrates during your workout. Also want to have quick carbohydrates at the beginning of your workout whenever you are training within 30 minutes training in about two or three hours you want to have a slower digesting complex carbohydrate like brown rice sweet potato potatoes or oatmeal as you take these three action steps that i have been discussing i also want you to take progress photos and body measurements don't rely too heavily on the scale weight because it's not an accurate representation of your progress. Take note, if your scale weight is staying the same, but your waist circumference is getting smaller and you are getting stronger, that is a good indication that you are on your way to body recomposition. That's it for me, guys. Make sure to give this video a huge thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you next time. Bye.